spokesman for the Rabbinical Alliance of America, an occasional spokesman for the Union of Orthodox Rabbis of the United States and Canada. He is a pro-life and pro-family activist who has had op-ed pieces appearing in the New York Times. Please put your hands together for Rabbi Lager. May the utterances of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be desirous to you, God, my rock and my redeemer. My name is Rabbi Yehuda Levin. I'm here today to stand shoulder to shoulder with my Christian fellow citizens in the vital defense of our most sacred right, that of true and total religious liberty. First and foremost, I'm a proud Bible clinger. I'm a Jewish American, but I'm a Jew way before anyone ever dreamed of America. I'm a grandson of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My progenitor blood donors stood at the foot of Sinai. They survived Egyptian, Greek, Persian, and Roman diasporas. They survived pogroms, inquisitions, and holocausts, Haman's, Hitler's, and Pharaoh's. Amen. The blood of my ancestors who lived and died for the credo. Those shall be holy because I, your God, am holy. Be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That blood and those charges course through my veins and those of my children and my grandchildren. It causes me to cry out and pledge no quasi-pharaoh in the universes of the political, the judicial, the media and the arts will coerce me to forsake the tenets and values of my father's faith. That is the message that extends from the Passover in Egypt through the heroism of thousands of survivors like my mother-in-law, a religious survivor who wears the brand of Auschwitz. May she live and be well. And it extends to the brutal murder of Rabbi Sandler and three children in Toulouse, France this week for worshiping God and believing in religious freedom. For in truth, this struggle, this denigrating of religion and faith values does not begin or end with facing those, forcing those who venerate God's gift of life to become a mindless dispensary utilized to fund and to provide directly or indirectly contraceptive or abortion facing life-denying formulas. This is but the symptom of an ever metastasizing anti-God, anti-Torah cancer that threatens religious people worldwide. Whether it's in France, whether it's in France where Sarkozy questions the right to maintain requirements of kosher and halal meat, or in Sweden, which jailed Pastor Aka Green for preaching in his church about biblical family values, or in Canada, where Dr. Laura's radio program or that of Focus on the Family may have been censored, or in Massachusetts, where a parent, Mr. Parker, was forced to leave the state because he didn't want his daughter forced fed, yes, brainwashed, with the anti-Torah values 
of the latest pro-deviance curriculum. We must wake up and fully oppose the unholy and anti-holy triumvirate consisting of ever-increasing elements of the political, judicial, and media arts accesses that are squeezing our beliefs and values out of the public square, shoving us into the churches where these sacred beliefs will eventually be denied there as well if we don't talk up. My friends, we have a very small window of opportunity in which we, the religious people, must be courageously led by fearless religious leaders who are willing to face scorn and prison and thus inspire and guide us to reoccupy the public square. Christians and Jews once had to face lions for hewing to their faith. To, today, our leaders dare not be cowed by NBC and the New York Times. We don't need Brian Jack. We don't need hale and hearty fellow types who react tepidly in the midnight hour, thus often sur surrendering more ground to the anti-religious, liberally social engineers. Uh, dare I give you a simple solution that I don't believe has been mentioned here today, and with this I conclude. The religious denominations must draw a line in the sand, raising up from within the church a new generation of religious valued politicians, office holders, and judges. <laughs> Raging from the most local level to the national level, we must instruct the faithful that it is morally, ethically, and religiously forbidden to compromise with these pharaohs at the ballot box. We must take some political scalps and you will see how the feckless politicians start to back up in reverse. Yeah. Only, only if our religious leaders stop tiptoeing and start leading and declaring that not only will they fight for the large churches, for the large denominations and their affiliates to be protected from our inquisitors, but each individual family and each individual religious citizen must be protected as well. Yay! All for one and then one for all. In conclusion, last paragraph, it's up to the religious leaders to lead 24 and 7. Only then will history record our victory and we will continue to be able to say and experience God bless America. Thank you.